means what we're discussing early loss of the tooth may lead to the arch length is loss and tend to contract and drifting of the teeth would have occurred and you have to give space maintainer you see especially when we talk about the upper arch you see the upper palatal root is a bigger and a larger size upper palatal root Can is very big and a larger size so lower root is somehow like this and the mesiodistal dimension is like this you have the mesiodistal dimension sorry buccolingual buccolingual this is lingual this is buccal the buccolingual dimension of the lower is somehow like this so whenever the lower molar it move mesially and when we talk about the upper first femoral molar the situation is this we do have a strong palatal root you have this very strong palatal root and a very small uh, buccal and a distal buccal root so this may have a center of rotation for that tooth and whenever you have the mesial migration of the first permanent molar you could have a condition somehow like this and this is very often and very common to see the mesial palatal rotation of the upper first permanent molar we have different type of rotations and in order for the descriptive purposes for example if this is the first permanent molar this is the palatal side and this is the buccal side okay this is mesial this is distal okay so for the purpose of the description how a tooth has been rotated we have different terminologies for that if this tooth is rotated in a way that this mesial part has moved towards the palatal side this mesial part has shifted toward the palatal side then this tooth somehow would be like this and the same situation can be described in a way because the distal side has moved toward the buccal side we distal can buccal. see the mesial palatal rotation or we can say yes. the same situation as a distal buccal buccal rotation buccal rotation this is the same situation this rotation do have a lot of clinical significance when we talk about the up anterior and the posterior especially in the situation is completely different for the anterior and the posterior before we go for the rotation yes. we be aware of this that in the anterior dentition the mesiodistal bit is much greater as compared to the buccolingual buccolingual bit so yes. what exactly happens when this anterior we are talking about the anterior tooth when this anterior tooth is rotated what happened if this is somehow like this then this greater mesiodistal dimension has reduced because of the rotation of the tooth okay. okay if this tooth is somehow like this and if this is rotated this will come this way and it's now the space that has been occupied in the arch is reduced because of the rotation of the tooth okay and the reason is this that is has a lesser buccolingual dimension and a very great mesial distal dimension and the greater the anterior tooth has been rotated the greater the anterior tooth has been rotated the lesser the mesial distal space it will be occupying within the arch yes what i have said the greater the mesial distal uh, the greater the yeah. tooth is rotated the lesser the mesial distal 
space it will be occupying within the arch. So coming to this situation, when we talk about a premolar, talk about the premolar, this has a lesser, what happened in the anterior, it has a greater mesodistal dimension. In the premolar, what you see, you have a lesser mesodistal dimension and a greater buccolingual dimensions of a tooth. Buccolingually, this tooth is larger in size, mesodistally, it is lesser in the size. So when you will have the rotation of this tooth, this will be occupying more space. For example, if this is the if this is the initial condition of a tooth, and if this tooth is rotated in a way that it is like this right now, so this is occupying more major distal space, or this is occupying more major distal space. Obviously, this is occupying more major distal space because of the rotation of the premolar. The same logic do apply for the molars as well. When yes. the first primary molar is normal in its condition, this is of around 10 to 11 millimeter in the mesodistal dimension. If this tooth is rotated, like, like uh, as I said, we do have the rotation on the palatal root. We do have the rotation on the palatal root and because this tooth is rotated, because of the rotation, this may go up to 13 millimeters. So if it's correctly aligned, this is occupying 10 millimeter of space. And if this is rotated on palatal root, I like the meso palatal rotated, this will be occupying a space like 13 millimeter. So the practical and the clinical relevance of the situation is this. We can regain, the word is space regaining. In the diagnosis, yes. whenever you see uh, the cast or models, do carefully examine the first primary molar and especially its rotation. Because by derotating, I'm using the word derotating, because initially the rotations has occurred. We say the rotation has occurred and now by derotating, de rotation, derotation means now you are reverting the condition and you can gain up to three millimeter of the space, the space. depending upon the severity of the rotation. And this yes. space okay. can be utilized for the correction of the crowding 